and welcome to the final part of how to design, develop and manufacture a printed circuit board. In this part we are going to be looking at testing and fault finding the circuit. So the first thing we need to do is connect the battery to it. So I've got a battery clip and I'm going to connect it to the terminal block for the battery. So on the diagram we've got a little minus and a little plus. The minus is the black wire so we just slide that in there and then this is what the little screwdriver is for. Just tighten that up. Okay and the red one Tighten that one up, just give them a little tug to make sure they won't come out. And then we need to put the switch in. For this I'm just going to get an old component leg. I can pick one up. Okay. And I'm going to use a pair of, put them in a pair of pliers. Bend it round at 90 degrees. And then the same just here to make a little U shape and I'm just going to snip a tiny bit off them to level them up then I'm just simply going to slide this into oops maybe a bit too fat put them in a bit slide it into the terminal block this just acts as a little link to join the two where the switch would actually normally be placed. Tighten it up and that one there. Okay, check that it doesn't come out, which it doesn't. And then it's just a case of connecting the battery. Now, before I move any further, I have deliberately made two mistakes on this board uh, so for the purpose of fault finding so I sh can show you how to fault find a circuit. So we'll connect the battery and see what happens. Nothing. Right, now that indicates, keeps moving, that there probably isn't power getting to the circuit. So we'll just move all of these tools out of the way in the solder. Okay. Now the way we check for power on the circuit is to use a voltmeter. So here I have a voltmeter and first off I'm just going to check that the leads are working. I'm going to turn it to the times one ohms range, touch the two leads together and I'm looking for the needle to move, which it does, so that means the leads are working. And I'm going to set it to 25 volts DC. This means that it can measure between the two probes a voltage up to 25 volts DC uh, on full scale deflection and then anything in between is a lesser voltage. So we'll just put these on here. So the black on the black contact and the red on the red. And we're not getting power to the circuit. So then, if I hold the black where the black is, it's going to be a bit awkward, I'll do my best. And also the red on the positive of the battery, we can see that the needle moves, which means I am getting a voltage between those two points. So the problem must lie here, where it connects to the uh, red. And the reason for this is, if I just undo the battery clip, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, the end of the red wire isn't stripped on the battery clip, but the black one it is. So I've got another battery clip here, which is stripped on both ends, and again, checking that we connect in the black one to where it says minus on the diagram and the red one to where it says 
plus on the diagram. Again, check that the leads don't pull out and we can connect the battery again. Now, we've got a slight problem. One of the LEDs is flashing, but the other one isn't. Um, in case nothing was happening, we could further check the root of the positive by leaving the black connected there, or if I can, possibly, I've got a little crocodile clip which I can use to connect to the end of the probe and I can connect that to the negative of the battery with any luck maybe not um, no, unfortunately not so we'll just stick with the probe so hold that on there and that on there and we can see it's getting a voltage on the voltmeter then we move to the next stage, which is a switch, or in this case, a wire link. We're getting voltage there, correct. And we're also getting voltage after the switch, or the wire link. Then if we follow it around on the diagram, the next place we should get voltage is on this pin of the timer. So if we oops, touch that on, we are indeed getting a voltage there. So everything's fine battery-wise. The next thing is to look for are uh, the components are correctly placed. Now I said earlier the LEDs had to be placed the right way round and if we just move the voltmeter to one side we can see, or you, you might not be able to see, hopefully we can, that the flat on that LED is the right way round but on this LED it's the wrong way round. So we need to desolder it. So to do this we need a soldering iron little bit of solder again and we also need a desolder pump or a solder sucker which is one of these. We press the plunger down and when we press the button it creates a vacuum and sucks solder through the nozzle. So we push it down We then need to work out which LED it is that's wrong. It's this one here. Heat it up press the plunger and with any luck it'll suck the molten solder off the contact. Oops, same on this one here. And hopefully the LED will wiggle straight out the board. Turn it around, place it back in the board and solder it back in. For this we're going to need to use the uh, trick I told you earlier, where we use one leg and then oops, just heat it up, check that it's nice and level and solder the second leg back in place. Clean the iron off and put it back in the stand. Now if we get the battery and test it again you can see both LEDs are lighting. Other problems that may occur with your circuit, other than no power getting to it and something the wrong way around, might be, especially with a 555 timer, you've got the resistors in the wrong place. Or a common one that people that make is uh, instead of using a 560 ohm or whatever value resistor to protect the LED, they might actually be using a 56 kilo ohm or a 560 kilo ohm resistor um, and obviously this is only one band difference it's only one color band different but it's maybe 10, 100, 1000, maybe even 10,000 times different in value which will obviously stop the LEDs from lighting altogether so those are things to check for and that's really it. Um, fault finding on a circuit of this size is quite easy. On a bigger circuit it obviously gets more difficult. Uh, but that's mainly the key things. Check that you've got power going to where power should be going. Check that your components are in the right way round. And check that resistor values are correct. Other things to look for 
might be um, one that I've fallen foul of quite a few times is uh, to forget to put the chip in. As daft as it sounds, that actually uh, it is quite a common one. So check that the chip is in and uh, sometimes replacing the chip might also work if the chip's faulty. And of course on that note, checking that the chip is placed in the right way round because uh, there's nothing to stop it being placed in the wrong way round, um, which could damage the chip. Also, an another thing to look out for is uh, you might have placed the chip holder in the wrong way around, which obviously doesn't stop you putting the chip in the correct way around, but uh, it can sometimes make it confusing. And so, although the chip looks like it's in the right way because the chip holder's the same direction, you might have placed the chip holder in the wrong way to start off with. That's all the ones I can think of for now. Um, also, continuity checks, checking that uh, basically the same as power, checking that the power is going to where it should go. And also, uh, if all else fails, you might want to look at using an oscilloscope to measure the outputs of, uh, say, the pulse from the 555 timer. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed the series. If you have any questions about where any of the equipment or the products can be bought from, or the components, feel free to PM me on YouTube or drop a comment on one of the videos.